Hi, I'm Madhu. And together we're the Mini Bees. Today we're going to be doing our second video of the pollution series. Earlier we talked about air pollution. If you want to know more about air pollution, we've left the link in the description box below. Today we're going to be talking about water pollution. What is water pollution? Water pollution is when waste, chemicals or other particles cause a body of water like oceans, lakes or rivers to become harmful to the fish and animals that need the water to survive. Water pollution affects nature's water cycle as well. There are two causes of water pollution, natural and human. Some natural causes of water pollution are volcanoes, silts from storms and floods, and algae blooms. Well, we can understand all the other things. What are algae blooms? Algae blooms are the green moss that we sometimes see on the surface of the water. Activities such as bathing, washing clothes near lakes, ponds and rivers add nutrients like nitrate and phosphate into the water bodies. This causes the growth of algae blooms on the surface of the water. It blocks the sunlight and air, thus reducing oxygen. Using diamondly safe cleaning products, not chemical ones, to reduce the growth of algae blooms. Some human causes of water pollution are sewage, pesticides and fertilizers from farms, wastewater and chemicals from industries and factories, silt from construction sites, and trash from people littering. How does water pollution affect us and our environment? Water pollution can have disastrous effects on the environment. Pollution in the water can reach a point where there is not enough oxygen for the fish to breathe. The fish can actually die. Sometimes pollution can affect the entire food chain. Small fish absorb the pollutants like chemicals into their bodies. Then bigger fish eat the smaller fish and get the pollutants too. Birds or other animals may eat the bigger fish and be harmed by the pollutants. Sewage can also cause major problems in rivers. Bacteria uses the oxygen to break down the sewage. If there is too much sewage, there won't be enough oxygen for the fish to breathe. Major events such as oil spills and acid rain can completely destroy marine habitats. What is oil spills and acid rain? First, let's talk about oil spills. Oil from ships and oil tankers can spill out on the sea and pollute the water. Oil poisons and harms the sea creatures and sea birds. The fur of sea mammals and the feathers of sea birds can be damaged by the oil. The animals may suffer and the effects may be fatal for them. When birds get soaked in oil, they can't fly and they can't go in water. And also, the vegetation can be affected by the oil. And now, what is acid rain? In our last video, we saw that harmful gases such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide pollute the air. Acid rain develops when these gases react with the water in the atmosphere, producing acid. When acid rain lands in the water, such as rivers, lakes, and streams, the water becomes acidic and toxic to the fish and other life in the water. Entire lakes have been declared dead because of acid rain. By reducing air pollution, we can prevent acid rain and protect our water bodies from pollution. Watch our video on air pollution to learn the various ways by which we can reduce air pollution. Just imagine what I'm going to tell you now, okay? A sea turtle swims through the water. It spots a white blob floating on the surface. Thinks, yum, a jellyfish! And swims and gobbles it up. But it's not a jellyfish. It's a plastic bag which can make the turtle sick. This sea turtle isn't alone. Over 700 species of marine animals have
have been reported to have eaten or been entangled in plastic. Scientists think that the amount of plastic in the ocean can triple by 2050. And that would mean seriously bad news for the sea and the sea creatures that live there. By understanding the issue and taking action, we can help stop that from happening. Not all plastic is bad. Bike helmets, car airbags, and other medical uh, supplies can save lives. The problem is that we use and then toss away way more plastic than we usually need. Things like grocery bags, straws, drink bottles, food wrappers, and plastic packaging around toys. This plastic that we only use once is called single-use plastic. It makes up most of the trash that we throw away. That's a lot of trash. How does this end up in the ocean? Plastic left on the ground as litter blows up into creeks and rivers, eventually ending up in the ocean. And since this trash isn't the same as other waste types that decompose back into nature, like an apple core or a piece of paper, it stays in the ocean forever. Discarded fishing nets entangle animals, and grocery bags and straws can be mistaken for food. We can do so much to keep Earth clean. Let's start by reducing the use of single-use plastic if going plastic-free is hard. To show that we care for this problem, we as the future generations should limit the use of plastic and protect the water bodies and urge our parents to join us in this effort in to save our planet. By working together, our choices can save animals and the ocean they live in. We should stop littering the environment with the plastic wastes and protect the water bodies, thus saving the marine life in them. Find a solution and stop pollution. Think blue and go green! If you want to watch more of our videos, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button. Bye!